and Corona, same thing for me. Both highly contagious, both millions of cases. Well, the flu, we know. And if I get it, I get sick for a week. But, but I, don't, I don't. Throughout the whole coronavirus scare, I feel like I've been somewhere in the middle on the whole thing, especially being on the rundown. Dave, Dave and Dan out on corona, don't believe in corona, corona's a fraud. Think about it, if every time somebody got the flu, it was a major story. Right. It would, that's what right. it is right now with corona, it's acting sort of like the flu. Right. Are you gonna get a corona shot next year? No. Like, I think in the end, everybody will be okay, minus, you know, unfortunately, some grandparents. But uh, early in the week, I'm thinking to myself, this is not good. Also not, you know, like everything else in life, I'm somewhere in the middle. It's like, it's not great, but it's not the extreme end of the world either. I was homesick last week. That's two things. But it's different, it's different than being homesick and I just was at right. like 34th Street versus like I was in Paris where there's people who are more likely to be from Italy or somewhere like that. That's all I'm saying. As a medical professional, I've read a lot of articles the last few days. It feels like the walls are closing in around us. Oh, and, and here's the thing. I, dude, I was I was nervous to, at first I was nervous to go to Europe. I'm going in two weeks. Yep. And now I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. I think that's the safe spot now. Yeah, I think that you gotta what go part of Europe. Do you think Europe's I'm the going, safe spot? I'm doing spot? Paris, uh, Paris, I'm doing exactly what we're going to do. You, you think going to Europe France is the is safe spot? Uh, France is worse than the US. Yeah. I think they, it's been there France longer. Is 2000 they're, 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 they're where we're at just two weeks ahead. They've had more time to study it. They've had more time right. to understand it. They're, they're on the forefront of the revolution. We're still behind. What about our friend in New Jersey who might not be a tip top sh shit? The tank Man. is quarantined, Quarantine. but then he goes to the courts where that can't be good. It's morning. I'm nervous for the tank. That's he, all I'm going to say. Tank should quarantine himself and only tank get the pizza delivered through the slot. And that's tank should quarantine the himself. The tank should be tank. very worried. Yeah. Tank the tank should, should be very scared. Tank. But you know what? Quarantine yourself, tank. Take care of yourself. I will Seriously. be the first one. I, if, God forbid, this is how tank's story ends, I won't po point the finger at Corona. No, it's everything else. You're a big man. You're a big what do you mean? Man. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, Corona got the tank. You will appreciate that. The tank. I just the want tank. the tank to be yeah. safe. The tank needs to be the safe. Tank tanked himself. The tank can't. It's we Jimmy can't Man. Uh, lose the tank. Brett, yeah, uh, Brett screwed Brett. Brett screwed Brett. The tank screwed the tank. <laughs> so the Ivy League canceled their conference tournament. So Yale's automatically in. Who cares? Um, but there's also it now sounds like the first four in are going to be spectatorless. I care. And I said to Dan. I mean, at what point do you start to get worried about them? Maybe I'm pushing worried. back, rescheduling, canceling, shortening. Canceling? What, okay. if, what if they were just like, you know what? It's what 32. Said. Canceling? We're, we're doing, we're doing no, no. 32 right, this year because right, we got to get right, this shit over. Right, right. What about they that? They can't do that. They can't do that. What coronavirus did was coronavirus marched into our prison yard and took out the four baddest motherfuckers in the yard. Took out just... Bam, 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 they fucking smoked the NCAA tournament in the face. No fans allowed. Next, Europe. Just took it right out. Totally out of the picture. Tom Hanks caught hands next. And then finally came the NBA season and Rudy Gobert, who I call Rudy Gobert now because I just can never get his name right. If, if billion dollar leagues are shutting down, I think that musicals and Broadway and all that shuts down. I think culture stops. I think once, once the NBA falls, and March Madness falls, there are so many lesser companies and industries that that are like, well, if they're gonna do it, then we have to do it. You know, the NBA was a big domino. Right. Huge domino. Because up until this point, certainly with March Madness, it's like, well, they won't cancel it because there's so much money involved. But the NBA is like, well, we're gonna do take public health over money, and then you look like a right, right. So if they didn't, I could see things holding strong. But I did, they did, and I, and I really think Rudy Gobert was a big part of that, because it was so much, it's almost like... It was so black and white, it was comical. I mean, he was such an asshole. Like, that's just such an asshole thing to do. If the world doesn't end in the next couple of years or whatever, that's going to be the funniest fucking clip ever. I was saying, I, ever. I, can't, I can't decide whether he's going to be like a, a trivia question, like a footnote in history, or if he's going to be like the face of it, where it's like, remember Rudy Gobert, that asshole. I now, I now, I mean, I've always been on the side of respecting coronavirus, but I now, 
serious, man. Sucks. Sucks. I'm just sad. I'm very, very sad. I built this company, been in first, first one in, last one out. A great captain always goes down with his ship. And that's the deal here. That's, uh, for all I know, I got the big C right now. I'm tired, but I don't think it affects the people in this office. Right now, the D&P 500 plans on being open every day that the stock market is open. I can't withstand too many more days like today. Uh, it's early. Gambling's obviously shut down. I was very much getting ready for March Madness and excited. Um, stock market's taken an absolute beating, and I thought there was an opportunity. So I couldn't gamble on sports. I thought it was a good time to get in. I thought the timing was right. Uh, so once March Madness got shut down, I decided I'd dive into the day trading. All right, live from the D&P 500. Uh, I am a professional day trader now, blood in the streets. I capitalize. Day two, let's go. Day trade city. At what price? Eleven dollars twenty five okay. cents. So you're picking a level. It's at twelve something right now. If it hits that, then we'll get sell okay. back at thirteen large. We'll make a bundle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and when you put in a sell stop, you'll yeah. ask me first. Yes. If for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make a bundle. Yeah. We'll make a bundle. Yeah, we'll definitely, uh, <laughs> we'll make a bundle, and if you don't, then you'll lose a bundle, yeah. right? Because I'll pretend that it never happened. All right, so that's like an $800,000 worth yeah. of stock, okay. Oh, yeah. So as soon as the market opened, it opened down, it opened down big, it triggered a bunch of what they call, uh, it triggered a, a trading halt, right? Because you can't just keep stepping on the neck of the market. So as it goes down a certain percentage point, the market say, listen, we got to take a 15 minute break, get a breather, get bids in, have people kind of get a clear head. Uh, Dave has picked a spot already in one stock. So he's put in a bid. So when the market reopens, if it was to go down again, he's already kind of picking spots. So it looks like Davey Day Trader is going to be doing it from the long side today. It's going to be looking for discounts and then looking to flip it out for a couple of bucks. That's the plan. So market's going to reopen a little bit. We'll see how it goes. But that's the plan so far today. My gambling history, I would hope, would help. I, I'm maybe not panicking. I have a higher risk threshold. Uh, but it hasn't helped at all. And I didn't realize at the time that Corona, it was before Corona really went fucking nuts. But I've lost a couple million just on that. Um, it seems to be very similar to my gambling. Like I'm just losing. He's, he's remaining calm. There's a flood on the third floor. We have no running water. The place is fucking falling apart. Dave is ice water, like this. I haven't seen that much reserve in a trader since 2003. And that trader was young Mike McCarthy. <laughs> well, Large is a former investment guy, take a report. He knows a lot of terms, terminology. So he, I asked him to be my advisor. He said no, but he would tell me like the rules. That's to sell out a long position, so you can leave it out there. The only yeah. way we're going to get in trouble with that yeah. is if you sell it with another order and you don't cancel that. Yeah. Then you'll be going short, yeah. which you don't want. So yeah. when we do go to do that, the only thing that we'll practice, I would think you want to, yeah. is instead of making another order, we'll change that order. Got it. Like we'll cancel replace. Got it. All right. You think things are going to tank after this press conference? What's that? After the press conference at 10, things are going to go down super low? I, I don't, something's got to make people get a little bit more positive on it. I mean, people have been saying, when's the bottom, when's the bottom, when's the bottom? So at some point, somebody's going to say it's the bottom. I realize, like, my life literally just revolves around drinking, going out, and sports. And now all those are gone for eight weeks. I legitimately don't know like, what I'm gonna do. Like, if I'm like, am I gonna like re read a book? Like I don't know what the fuck to do. Like read like The Catcher in the Rye or like To Kill a Mockingbird. Like, this is where people show their balls. So yeah. you can do one of two things. You can just get the fuck out, say I made a huge mistake, or you can show some resolve and stay in there. And I'm pretty sure I know what you're doing. Yeah. No. Right. This is this is resolve. This is this is years and years and years of training. He's coming to <laughs> this the is forefront. Uh, this is hours of, of trading. <laughs> Dude, well, yeah, but a different type you're of trading. You're training for your whole life with the gambling. Yeah, different, yeah. different. Still balls. At blackjack, when you're sitting there with your biggest bet you've ever made, 
and you're sitting there with a 16 and you see an ace with the dealer and all the chicken shits run and surrender and give me half my money back. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Either when the ace, uh, when they look, you know, they peek. Do they have blackjack? Nope, I'll fucking double down on that shit. I won't because it's not the right play, but <laughs> you don't surrender. Never. Okay. We're, so we're keeping an eye. Keep it we're up. keeping an eye, and I'll keep you up on whatever I see. Real-time quotes are at a fucking premium today. I just need one, one like uptick. Just a little bump, and then you yeah. sell. Well, it's in there to sell, but it's like, you know, pen nine dollars and ninety cents. Insane. Let's see. Like right now, today, I'm probably down. How much money am I down? I'm down, down fifty-five grand today. I'm a fighter. This would be good content. It's too bad we don't have like anyone here to do like this is all in stool scenes. It's like more real-time stuff. There it is. Five hundred. Boom, boom. Boom. Where? Your order has been received. And now we'll see our order status. So now what? If you get now, you just have it set automatically. You were executed. You bought fifty thousand. You bought fifty thousand. You bought fifty shares of pen. Fifty like shares of pen. And twenty-five cents. Beautiful. He's taking part in the rally, coming off the balls of its ass. What'd you do? You bought fifty shares of a stock that we both know at ten dollars and twenty-five cents. Whoa, bro. Was that hard? Yo, to what's open? like a good restaurant? That there's like Chick Fil A on there. Can we buy Chick Fil A? Sure you can. Come on over. Yes. Yeah, let's. Try How much? My next three hundred. I don't. Are they allowed to be open right now? Yeah. I think so. It's well. Let's it, go, takeout's balls. open, so that actually might about that? kind of be a genius idea. Balls, I we're in on chick. We're in on chick. Get, chick get it on Chick Fil A. Yeah. Balls is right. Chick Fil A. People need to get takeout. They gotta eat. <laughs> the Chick Fil A stock is about to skyrocket. I'm telling you, people. All right, now. You know, honestly, all the people in the city doing takeout. What's Chick Fil A? What's his symbol? Oh, yeah. If you if you live in the city, why would you not get takeout from Chick Fil A? Yeah, but balls. I'm saying, can you buy Chick Fil A stock? It's fucking Chick Fil A. It's the best food they have in the city. Great point. What's his symbol, Balls? Uh, I don't know how to find the symbol. I don't think they're a publicly traded they're company. They're not a publicly traded company? You're sparking a pen rally. It's up to 1039. Was that like five cents? What'd you buy that? I don't know. Yeah. 1025. Yeah, you're up, Balls. <laughs> Dude, we're so bad. 1041 we're last, so bad. Balls. Fuck the coronavirus, who cares? We just gotta find a good publicly traded restaurant. Chick-fil-A. I don't know if it's publicly it's traded. Not. They're saying it's not publicly it's traded. You can go to Chipotle though. Chipotle, no, no one's gonna go to Chipotle. Right? Right. You had me so fired up on Chick-fil-A, Balls. Bro, I didn't know Chick-fil-A was a, was a trade, publicly traded company. We're just company. sitting here. Balls, you know what you're gonna do? At this rate, you're gonna ring the closing bell today for me. <laughs> Ken is so back. Ken is so back. Balls. <laughs> Yep, that's an honor, boss. To ring the bell. Yeah. Yeah, I know when you did it, it was a big deal. We have to, by the way, get a way to hang it up officially. Oh, Penn went way down. Hey, Penn, the, the, the Penn rally is over. So I need Penn to get to 11 and went back down under 10 bucks. Okay. We're in the red now. Where do I get the updates? It was so close, boss. Where do I get the updates? You, you, got, you can just, like, like on your app. right on your phone? Yeah, like, right there. 989 it was all the way you you rallied it to like 10 yeah and these are the live updates on the side. live updates yeah. all right, all right. damn it balls we're gonna, we're gonna get back we're gonna get back there what are we down like 40 percent today we're gonna get back up damn it balls we're positive vibes only i think tonight once dinner rolls around people a lot of hungry. people are gonna get hungry and they're gonna I want like shake that. shack yeah, shake like shack's that. a big delivery thing a lot of people get shake shack delivered here i like that right now it's breakfast time it's only 11 a.m you just wait for the lunch orders to roll around the dinner orders i'm stuck because all my money's gone and there's blood in the streets. I'm probably down six figures today. We gotta come back, balls. I'm probably down like this is bucks. this is trading. This, this is, is. I, like you want to get an inside look at Merrill Lynch, J.P. Morgan, all the big houses. This is this you is how the mines. I mean, this is how it goes down. People, I mean, people are gonna want to eat Chick Shack. Order Shake Shack tonight. Not yet. It's only eleven. The orders start rolling. Even lunch, I would think, would be. Better. No, I think like one o'clock. Well, we should check back at like one. One by one to one. two. One to two. Okay. Look at this. Fantastic. <laughs> Dojo is the what is? Honestly, my first question. I'm not going to ask now. Save us for stock central. What's the dough? <laughs> Don't know what it is. <laughs> Don't yeah the dough. That's not for real. It's the dough. Oh well, no, because cow d dough no dough. 
smartest minds in the financial community right here. You might the, DMP, the DMP 500. But we're going to talk away. This is this is the DMP 500. You guys, you guys stick with it. You can listen to all your advisors and see how things shake out. He knew that the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, dough? He knew that burgers are going to be in demand because delivery. That's why you talk to your people. That's why you talk to your people. I should have said, I should have frowned there. No, that's the I end. That's frowned. the end. The DMP uh, 500 closed for the day. Uh, I'm down about, I think, quarter mil. Uh, Glenny invests in Shake Shack because invest in what you know. And I'm he's down like, about 10 Bird guy, ten dollars. Uh, it went downhill with you when you ordered Shake Shack, and then you crucified them for their cheese being all over the bag. And uh, I bought a lot of pen today. And but the good thing about day trading is we'll be back tomorrow. The DMP five hundred will reopen tomorrow night a.m. and uh, we'll turn that frown around and we'll smash Corona and eat burgers and gamble and be jolly. Buy Shake Shack. Can I say that? Is that is that fraud? That's inside of trading, maybe? Is that? I don't know. Don't post that. If it is. <laughs> no, I think you're okay. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't want to see a dentist. I want to go outside. I don't want to get corona. Oh no, how long did I cook this for? Let's go there. Let's hit the steak button. Yeah, that's not working. Great. Oh. Now what's that do? I do not own a whisk. I really should buy one. Every time I cook gravy or anything like this, it's like, hey, buy a whisk instead of using a fucking spoon. And then I just forget to do it. I have rice here. If I was feeling cocky, cook that too. Had never really done that or cooked rice, so we might do that. That seems really simple. Oh, all right, here's a live look on the gravy. It's not a great color right now, but it will get there. Just, uh, oh, broccoli ready. Oh, you guys probably think that looks like dick, but it looks pretty good to me. I got some steak, steak cubes. That's what the kids are calling them these days, okay. I mean, I think this looks like a fucking meal to me. I couldn't have done a better job if I tried. Well, I hope you guys are happy. I'm no longer in the Bahamas. I'm back in quarantine with the rest of you folk, reporting live from the parking lot of a Holiday Inn Express in South Carolina. That's where my girlfriend's parents live and we can't move in with them because God forbid we give them the coronavirus. But let me just clear a few things up. I didn't plan my trip to the Bahamas to just magically start the first day the US was put on lockdown. It just happened that way. I was homeless because I can't go back to China. That place has been locked down for months and some guy offered me a place to stay for free. So I went. I truly do feel sorry for the people whose vacations were canceled because of this. For example, Roan, K Marco. I was probably the, the last person able to sneak in a vacation before this whole shitstorm started swirling. But I will not apologize for that. I had a blast and I made a lot of really good friends such as Captain Morgan. It's time to fucking get some real estate up in the fucking space. Because <laughs> space is what's going on. So I need a shot of the kilo. Everything on me. Laverne. I ran into my coconut tree. I was fucked up. And I ran Wait, into my coconut tree in my yard. Were you okay? I'm great. I just got a little scratch there. All right. Porno Dave. Yeah, you know, I would say like I've dated like two porn stars and both were two, three months. Lady Die. If they bring any more hosts, oh, I'm gonna oh, get deported. I call immigration. I say, man, they catch him on the beach. I'm having sex with. No, we don't do that in the Bahamas. I've, I've never even done that. A dude named Smurf. Now, Smurf, do they call you Smurf because you always wear blue? Ah, uh, no. When I was born, I was premature. <laughs> oh, okay. And I was blue and I had a big nose. <laughs> oh, all right. So my aunt called me Smurf. <laughs> That's a nice aunt. And two stoolies named Austin who took me spearfishing for the first time. So, thanks for that. But the quarantine comes for us all eventually. And yeah, this is my life now. Just meandering around a parking lot next to a highway. It's kind of a nice day out. This is my first time outside in three days. You can still go outside, folks, as long as you're not around a lot of people. But I realize that's hard to do in New York. Um, all right, well, that's it. Not much else to say, so stay safe. Here's a few cold hard facts now. Here's a few cold hard facts now about Gus Duggerton. Gus Duggerton had the number one rated offense in the entire country coming out of the MAC. Now that's some action right there. That wasn't in my contract to bring that number one offense, but that's what we did. We did that and then some. New Year's Eve six ball, done it. It's not my problem that the defense was a liability. I wasn't saying on that side of the ball. Okay. So hell yeah, people gonna come calling. Florida State came calling, and the Mrs. Reddit go balling in the Sunshine State. The Gus Bus is heading to Tallahassee. Go nose. And now a message from our resident nerd. All right, we're recording. It's uh, Tuesday, March thirty first. Yep. And we've been missing the office. We're getting stir crazy, stir stir fry. Stir crazy. Stir crazy. We're not getting Those stir Those are fried. two very good things. <laughs> yeah. um, so I decided, I was feeling a little homesick for HQ. Why not bring HQ to our home in Minecraft, right? So let's take the tour. 
This is the front of the building. This is 7th Avenue, as, as everybody knows, I'm sure. This is my bed that I have to sleep in if I'm go try, not trying to build it nighttime. Just for a quick glimpse behind the scenes, this is, I mean, this is what he's been doing. He's so bored <laughs> that he was like, I miss work. And I do too, honestly. I miss going into the office. I miss seeing all those people. Robbie took it to a different level and was like, I'm going to build the entire office on Minecraft. Yeah, so this is our lobby. It's a pretty nice lobby. Upstairs, business floor, another boring kind of floor. This is Erica's office. The CEO. Yep. I even got her couch in there, her TV, her desk, old chair. The attention to detail is top notch. Yeah, stained glass like she has. And then here's the equipment room. Bunch of chests. You could actually open these, store things in there if you want wow. to. Wow. Yep. Um, so this is the content area. This is where I sit over here. This is my desk. This is the garbage can next to it. Uh, Jeff Delo sits over here. They haven't put his toys in yet. Um, this is, you know, Big Cat, Hank, Marty Mush, Double Vodka Don, Roan, PFT. This is the entire content area. Trust this is your me. Desk over here. I yeah. really do miss going into the office. This is your view. And yeah. Dave's office. You got I see Dave. I always people look at, in front of you. I always look at Frankie. I got Casey right in front of me. I got, yep. I got the dog right beside if me. You want to check out the rundown? Oh, what's going on over there? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you really have been bored. Yeah, so 1-800-Flowers has bought this rundown promo. They've got all six TVs, the shelves next to them, the chick's room. Obviously oh, it is purple. Obviously, they film chicks in the office. Shout out Rhea and Fran. How long did that take you? Um, <laughs> I'm not willing to admit that on camera. This is what it looks like from the top, by the way. Lighting configurations. Wow. So, uh... Hang in there, everybody. I know I am. And now it's time for a wellness check on Smitty. How's my quarantine going? Well, I'm whipping up on Clem, Rhea, Hank, and Mario Kart right now, so that's fabulous. But I'm also having trouble leading the likes of Private Balls, AKA Sergeant Staines, because he's a stain guy, AKA Benedict Balls, because he's a traitor, AKA Cowardly Balls, because he's a coward, AKA Failure Balls, because he needs to be a winner one time on the battlefield. And it's frustrating. Let's go get him. Go up. Okay. You're okay? Go up. Balls! Balls! You leave men behind like no other! What are you doing, Balls? If we both attack at the same time, it's glory years! What are you nuts? What are you talking about? You fucking left me! What are you saying? We were both upstairs attacking him and then you just left! Very frustrating. Also, I think I have Corona. That's not like a joke, I'm sick of shit. Transmission off. Hello, and welcome to Stool Scenes. America is under a state of duress. All over, people feel fear and all different types of emotions. Meanwhile, at Barstool Sports, everyone is focused on making some content, somehow. Everybody's working on it and, well, here I am to give you a little bit of an anchor in this week's Stool Scenes Quarantine Edition. Bam! We don't really, it's, it's tough for graphics right now because everybody's doing it from home. So I'm kind of just giving a little bit of a physical graphic with that. Bam! Quarantine edition. Start things off at old Dave's apartment. All right. I, can Yeah, we can do the camera this way, right? Hey, do I have to do this the other way? Keep it this way. All right. I got all sorts of tools. I got three tools in case anything gets fucking dull. The fearless leader of Barstool Sports was doing what he does the best, reviewing pizzas. But since he's under a lockdown, he's had to do these pizza reviews remotely from his own home. He can't go to these purveyors of pies. So he decided he would order some pizzas from whatever frozen pizza merchants are out there in the world. He gave out his address in hopes that he would receive some pies in return. Oh! Look who it is, you motherfuckers, Jax. We reached out to Jax because a lot of people are like, hey, give Jax a shot. Those cocksuckers, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, 
I don't mean those cocksuckers disrespectfully, but those fucking cocksuckers wrote back to one of my guys, hey, we love to do it. We can't send them one fucking pizza. We don't have time. We're in a pandemic. You think people have time? I'm getting boxes literally coming out of my asshole. I can't keep the boxes from coming. These cocksuckers, I don't mean that disrespectfully, couldn't send one pizza. Well, now I'm going to review it, Jackson. It better be fucking good, you cocksuckers. I don't mean that disrespectfully. Oh, yeah. He received a lot more than that. The packages started to pour in from left and right. And being the dexterous mind he is, Mr. De Portnoy El Presidente said, I'm going to make some content out of this. I'm going to craft this into a new type of content that this world has never seen before. I'm going to take all of these boxes and I'm going to un them. Unboxing. <laughs> Graphic. Think about it. Unboxing was born. They started unboxing and the internet went nuts. Somebody sent me this. Just a fucking tire. It was, <laughs> it was just fucking sitting there. I'm like, is this for me? Yep. DDT, there it is. There's the day trading firm. DDTG Global. Look at that fucking polo. This is going to be one of those performances you tell your kids, like, where were you when JFK was shot? Where were you when Land Man on the Moon? Ah, why is it dark? Where were you during the unboxing? And that is that. That's the first ever unboxing that I did. It got so out of hand that he had to have Spider and Kareem. Who are you? I'm Kareem. Why are you hiding pics from me and Dan? I was not hiding Then why squeal and crack? I saw the text message and Jack okay, Matt that pointed text message, to you. Right, I'll, under, I'll explain the text message right now. Coming over to his house to clean up the carnage of his daily unboxing videos. It was a beautiful start to a beautiful week in some weird circumstances. Let's watch. All right, folks, here we are. We are at Dave's apartment. He's up there on the third floor. Hey, Spider, come on. All right, thanks. Just like that. All right, here we are in the apartment. Clearing all the boxes. Check out this one. Looks like a mouse got in here. Elevator fully loaded. Fuck. <clears throat> How the fuck do you work this? It's not going up. Did I overload the elevator? Fuck, this is embarrassing. Three. Nothing like loading the elevator up, only to get trapped in it. Stay tuned, folks. Here we are with all the packages for tonight. Lots of mail coming in. What was the best gift you got yesterday? Well, I birthed the sun, so probably Randolph. Feeling good. Uh, it's taken us a little bit longer than it has in the couple last days. Uh, today was like a seven and a half hour day. Uh, there's a lot of packages today for tonight's unboxing, and uh, we're going to keep going. Prediction for the number you got tonight? Uh, probably like 225. I think we got the most that we've ever gotten. I think it was at like 198 or 199 yesterday, and so today it's probably a little bit more. It's going to keep growing. Here's what the pile looks like. It's taller than your boy. Lots of good stuff to be unboxed tonight. Stay tuned. We will also be on YouTube tonight. Check out this dual setup. Got the YouTube setup and then the Instagram setup. Pick your poison, folks. We'll see you at 8. Time for everybody's favorite quarantine show. The Unboxing 5. The question on everybody's mind across the country right now. How's Randolph doing? Here he is in the flesh. He is very much alive. Randolph. Randolph, swim for the people, Randolph. But he's getting an upgrade because no son of mine is going to live in what looks like a bowl made for watermelon. Uh, is he in there? Where'd he go? Look at how happy he is. Big league fucking chew. Fuck right. Now I'm playing ball. Now I feel like I'm being active. I'm doing something. I haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do it yet. Charity, whatnot. Yeah, blood. I bladed myself. I made myself bleed my own blood. One of these days, I'm going to cut a finger off. Because I'm using heavy artillery 
And I'm just dropping it all over the place next to my fingers and shit. Look at this fucking thing. What is this called besides the fucking angel of death? Oh, it fogs up. I'm fogging up. Can you hear me? Can people hear me? I can't read. I kind of look like I should play for Auburn, don't I? I'd be probably fucking lightning off the line where you said, whoop. Like, do you see that first step? <laughs> I hope you caught that. This thing shreds. I appreciate everyone sending the presents. Kiss your mailman, your courier. Tell Corona to go fuck itself. Mail just keeps fucking coming. Thank you for joining. Marty. What? It's Monday. How we doing, baby? What's going on? What are it's, we doing? What are we doing today? I think there's a tornado of, of a foot, and Rudy's been a real prick. Ever watch him? You ever think how he actually drinks? No, I don't their, know. Their tongues are dry. You know that? I don't know that. Your mouth is dry. But right now, I'm going to go outside and uh, put our tables and an umbrella in. It's a tornado Why do you foot. look like that? I don't know. Man. You look like I'm a fucking shit. mad I'm losing, scientist. I'm losing my shit. <laughs> now, let's go right here. Now, you're going to hit it right where it was before. No, that's just too much space. Let's see. <laughs> right where it was. Now, how do we angle this fun. sucker? This is fun. How do you angle this sucker, though? All right, so what's this one look like? That one has to hit that. Right? That Bang. one goes boom, boom, boom. Has to hit this. All right, so it's so right there. No, up further. There you go. And it's going to angle like that. <laughs> no, it's like, this is satisfying. Yeah. He just phoned in. Hey guys, how are you? Go through a roundabout here. Get the care bus. That's it, you toast. But now we're driving in. This is the drive right behind it. Golf and Country Club. We had DeMarcus Ware, a huge golf guy, called in from his, uh, zoomed in from his golf simulator. We had Matthew Fitzpatrick, who's the people's British golfer. We had Max Momo, who's uh, uh, a major champion in the online pro team. He also, you know, uh, it's been great. So foreplay, we're kicking the game of golf world. Daily nine, very first videos, over under. I've lost, I think, 600 bucks in uh, betting, you know, on my golf on myself, which is rare and unlikely, but I'm doing fine. I'm trying to make the best bet. Rolling into Pioneers, it's time to shoot another daily nine. Stool Streams is an all encompassing platform 
for people who are looking to disrupt the standard uh, sporting enterprise of America. I don't know what that means, but it's a lot of cool buzzwords. It's, it makes me sound like I'm in uh, WeWork or something. Uh, it's a lifestyle brand. <laughs> uh, what we've done is we've disrupted the concept of having a game room and cameras. And so we're broadcasting, whether it's ping pong, some sort of pop shot basketball, darts. We've got giant Jenga, got cornhole. And basically, it's going to be us competing against each other. You'll be able to watch it live. Hopefully, one day you can bet on it live. We'll have live odds that go out, and we'll have a, a team of a play-by-play -play guy and a uh, color guy up in the booth. Big Cat is the commentator, and he just kind of, he does whatever he wants. He, he it's supposed to be like, you're not supposed to hear the commentators. It's supposed to be separate. He just chirps me, chirps PFT. Uh, but you know, it's fun. It feels more like you're just in the basement with, with, your, with your cousins uh, than actual broadcast, but that's all right. All right, welcome in. It is center court time. We have PFT versus Hank three. That is three. Hank is up 2-0 in the series. It's not a counting thing, but Hank is dominating this series. Tonight, another seven-game series. So we're going to get it going. Let's start with uh, who gets to serve first. So what we decided tonight is it's going to be who can blow the biggest bubble. I guess I'm the judge, correct? Mm -hmm. So I am the judge on who can blow the biggest bubble. Three, two, one, blow. Okay, Hank won that one easily. I didn't chew my gum for long enough. PFT's already come up with excuses that he didn't chew his gum long enough. It's true. And it begins. And it begins. Oh my god, PFT is in trouble. Oh my god, I mean, he gets the point. What a move. I've never seen anything like it in ping pong. PFT uses everything when he's got. He throws the kitchen one. sink at him. And Hank can't capitalize. I'm gonna lose. I'm not gonna lose. PFT's got everything to lose. Six point. So it was Big Cat. Oh no! Oh man! It was wait. Was that game point? What did you say there? What was the? He what said, was? Yeah, that know, was game point. What he was? He said the, PFT's got everything to lose, and so does Big Cat. Oh, and then he whips. Column will stay can undigested. We get, can we get a column? Can we? Oh, let's see that. He says mutters to himself right now. PFT. Oh, Big Cat has everything to lose. This is now an elimination game, folks. Can. Hank Wait, come back from a 3-1 lead. If PFT loses this, he will never, ever hear yes, the yes, end sir. of it. Hank, you have the ability to make history when PFT had a 3-1 lead and blew it. And there it is. 4-1. to one. Wow, what a moment. What a moment. Don't want to say I told you so, but that is just how sports always work. Gentlemen, sweep. All right, bang, bang. This is Barstool Chicago. It is Monday, May 4th. We got a full crew here today, and uh, we're going to start the show with um, some controversy that surprisingly does not involve one of the four of us going at each other. It's, another, it's with another uh, Barstool employee um, over the weekend. Okay, this is the backstory that you need. Carl out there in Chicago was following a story about one of our advertisers at Barstool. And the problem about the story was that, um, you know, it was bad and that they pay us. Boom, clap, clap, snap your fingers. He goes over to K Marco via telephone. Hey, K Marco, is it a good idea to trash one of our advertisers? K Marco picks it up. Um, no, dude. And he, and he took it further than that. <laughs> like, I'm fucking around. I've had a couple mm -hmm. beers. It's a Saturday afternoon. I'm just like, okay, dude, like, whatever. And I get this fucking email. It's like a thesis. That just tells me how fucking stupid I am for how for asking the question. I can read the email on air if I want it to. I'm not doing that yet. It's just a long email that is not fucking nice at all. At all in the least bit. That is like you went out of your way to send a. This is fucking crazy. Keith, you there? Yep. What's up? All right, you're on. Dude, are you guys playing the meanest prank on me of all time? Because I, I, you can't be serious. Mm. Uh, we're, do you we serious, sound like the joking? I'm, I'm reading the. I'm reading the D quotes, and it does sound like now you're pranking me. So I'm not going to get mad because then I'll look dumb. No, we're definitely very, very serious here. Do you have the email you I sent can't. in front? Could you, could you pull that up for a second? 
and yeah, tell me exactly why you why, sent that email? That is why I'm confused because I cannot imagine anyone who has ever met me, let alone met a human being, would not know that I was being sarcastic with you guys who we go back and forth all the time. What? Like, what? what? All the time? There's a, there's That's pretty a, fucking convenient, there's... Keith. So then these guys are going back and forth, back and forth, blah, 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 blah. And then, but one of them's kidding and one of them's not kidding or one of them says he's kidding and then other people, are, you know, he's drunk. He already admitted to that. And you just got a, a whole mess of a situation. And what happens then? Then, you know, we got out of hand. And some things were said that we all wish weren't said. And we all wish could be taken back. But unfortunately, you can't go back in time. You can only be transparent about it and apologize for your mistakes. And they didn't do that. Guys, I've been here 11 years. No text I send on my phone, I expect to be safe from going up on the internet. I would not say this stuff in a serious way to the person I hated the most in the world, let alone guys that I actually like. I apologize that I, w I misjudged our friendship, apparently. I, or not friendship, just, but like I, I thought you would at least get it. This is so crazy to me. It's just crazy. You know? Like, I didn't... I don't know. What did I say? It, it was so mean you couldn't take it serious. I've never heard that one before. All right. That's it for today. Uh, quite, the, uh, quite the dilemma. Uh, Barcelona Chicago, Barcelona Radio. We will see you guys all tomorrow. I talked to Eddie. I talked to Carl. I talked to Carl today. My impression on it, and this is be me being dead honest, and I wasn't even going to bring it up, but since you asked me, they're both deferring to Keith because of his seniority, being like, yeah, we get it. I understand what he's saying, but I don't think they truly get it, but they're deferring. That's how I take the situation. Would you have gotten mad if you were the Chicago guys? I don't know enough about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in three minutes and 37 seconds, Dave Portnoy and Barstool Sports laid out perhaps better than anyone ever has the absurdity of our current lockdown strategy. Here's part of it. Okay, Corona rant time. Whenever I do a Corona rant, half the people fucking hate me, half love me. We'll see where this one lands. What the fuck's going on? When did this become flatten the curve, flatten the curve, flatten the curve to we have to find a cure or everyone's going to die? Where'd that come from? And the L.A. mayor. We're not open in the city till we find a cure? What? All we've heard forever. Flatten the curve, flatten the curve. Make sure there's hospital beds, we're there. Now all of a sudden it's like a 180. This is like taking a cross country flight, six hours. They tell you flight six hours. Five hours and a half go by. They get on the intercom like, oh, just kidding. We have another 10 hours. You can't do that. People have been mentally preparing. We're doing what you ask. We've done exactly what you said. Now you're changing the rules. If you told me because of Corona, I lost Barstool. I had to go get a nine to five and start fucking over. I'd rather die of Corona, seriously. Or at least take my chances. I'm not saying everybody would do that. I would. Tucker, a week ago, I said everybody, I did the same exact rant, except it was about masks. If you don't wear a fucking mask, you're a fucking dickhead. You're a fucking asshole. You should be fine, thrown in jail, tarred in feathers. If there's a point zero 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 one percent chance that somehow helps and gets people back to work, then throw it on. There's nothing to lose. So I've been on both sides. I'm not trying to make a political. And by the way, the Forbes guy, I uh, he's I haven't seen the article. He sent me an email five minutes before I came on and said, um, basically everything you said was garbage. Do you want to defend yourself? But apparently I already went to print. Dave Portnoy, thanks so much for this. You look great for a man who's been in quarantine. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I still got the purple sweatpants on. What a fucking soap opera this is. We got boyfriends, we got backstabbing, we got millions of dollars. Obviously things started to go further south. And there started to be a lot of conversations with lawyers, and there started to be this very long protracted conversation about how Alex and Sophia should be compensated. And ultimately, you know, we offered everything. There's uh, like, I do my thing, you do your thing kind of coworkers, and then there's like straight up rude coworkers, and that's what they were. They expect so much it's from us. It's just so ridiculous. Do you think that there'll be any type of change of tone? Yeah, I do. We offered for them to have their IP. We offered them an extremely lucrative talent deal. 
it sounds like Dave came back and made them like an awesome offer that even they realized like we can't refuse this. And it sounds like Sophia was saying basically, well, Peter like stuck his neck out for this to make this happen. And we can't do anything to make him look bad. The way it went down is when that deal was offered, from the way I've understood this is like, they showed up to meet with me as Alex has said, it's like a courtesy. Like we're pretending we're interested, but this is it. Like, nope, couldn't do a deal, see you. They weren't anticipating me to make that offer. And wow. when I did, got it. they went like dark. Like, I'm like, you guys are crazy. Like, how can there be hesitation? Like, I would want to sign this before I left the roof deck. Yes. Well, we couldn't, hit, we didn't hear back. And like, Eric is calling their lawyer being like, hello. And that's when Alex, to your point, Kevin, and why I believe her story, she's like, I need to talk to you like alone. It's easy to make good arguments when you have the truth on your side. That's why I always like to tell the truth because I can be like, bing, 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 bing. I have all the fucking, as the girls, I've learned it. I have all the tea. I guess that's what you guys call it. I spill the tea, I fucking guzzle the tea, and I go and spit it all over the place because I'm telling the truth. But in the middle of a pandemic, in a situation where we have two employees in breach of their contract, in a situation where we look really bad with our advertising partners, and I mean really bad, we kept offering and we kept going to the table in the hopes that something could work out. And now what we've gotten caught in is a situation where there's a lot being revealed. Look, I sat them eye to eye when I knew they were lying to me. And I was like, I know you're lying to me. And I, it, I was like, if you guys leave, we're going to war. Like, I don't know what you think I'm going to do, but I'm going to go to war. How Dave Portnoy goes to war. Like, right. it's not, and I have all the proof. I get it. I'd probably be mad too a little bit if I was Sophia and Alex. I mean, they were a team. They were both getting ready to stab me right in the fucking face. And then I do that awesome deal on my roof deck and then Alex comes to her senses like, wait a minute, we can't bail on this. It's such a fucking good deal. They're giving us more than what we want. They're giving us everything we could dream of. So if he won't do it, because Suitman was definitely involved in my mind. I don't have the fucking proof, but you know it. And getting that Wondry deal that we know was there to call the show the fathers and fucking leave Barstool. It's like fucking salacious. Like it's a good read. If we weren't in the middle of this, I would be dying to read about it. So Alex is like, I can't do it. She can't convince Sophia to leave because Sophia is with Suitman and they're just walking down the street with fucking that big old head on fucking Suitman. And Suitman's like, how'd I get a girl like this? Yeah, exactly, Suitman. Fucking go quote Walt Whitman. Um, so yeah, Sophia's mad because she's like, wait a minute, how can you pull out at this point? Well, Alex has to look out for number one at some point. It would have been a fucking disaster if you guys just bounced and went to Woundry. You think I was just gonna fucking take that? It would have been World War Three. Instead, you got everything you wanted, could leave in a year. It, like, that's where Alex was smart. She wanted to do it, according to her, as a team. Like, let's take this fucking deal. And Alex and Nel Team Nelson, Sophia, they're like, nope. And they did. They were coming back. They were trying to renegotiate for even more. Jesus. And then Alex, like, this is never going to happen with them. Like, every time you agree to something, they're going to just keep moving the goalposts. So it's never going to get done because, essentially, according to her, like, Peter Nelson had put his neck on the line and done all this shit. And he would look like a jerk if like they retracted. The deal apparently, again, as I understand it, was already like ready to go with one drink. What happened? Why was no one talking to us for three days? Because they were moving the goalpost. Team Superman was, at least that's what I believe to be the case. And you can't really be like, oh, I want 50%. I'd love to be at Barstool. That only started happening when the other thing fell through because Alex left. You, like. You know, I feel bad for Sophie in a way because I guess I got such a big fucking heart, but like you did this all yourself. Like the only logical reason to turn down a deal that good, I guess, unless you're worried about your boyfriend's reputation, is if I thought I had like a $2 million deal waiting for me. But, but there's no deal. Cause you can't. No deal better yeah. than you own your own IP. Right, right. So there is no deal I'm better. I'm you offered that. I know they make a lot of money. I'm still stunned. Well, it, it, it really literally was we're gonna get nothing. I am getting so right. many. But I also just feel like Grudge Dave would have been like, I'd rather lose some money and still control your totally. shit, fuck you over then. Totally, but that's that's the maturity 17 years in. You can't cry about getting stabbed in the back when you were stabbing us in the back. And I have all the text telling her that. It's like, what, what do you want me to do? It's like, you were getting ready to fuck me over. Now you want me to be like, 
to Alex, like, no, she can't come back without you. It's like, well, you should have thought about that before you're trying to fucking stomp on my face. But like, you lost the call her daddy battle by being an idiot and listening to bad fucking advice from bad fucking people.